last Monday of the month, I like to share with you a female founder. Now I know Condoleezza Rice does not have her own company, but she has run the company of the United States for Foreign Affairs, so we're gonna say that's gonna count because this is my political month. I'm super excited to introduce you to this book by Elizabeth Bumiller about Condoleezza Rice. Again, I listened to this one on Audible. It was a really intriguing listen. Now, truth be told, I was just kind of searching Audible, trying to find another good book, and I thought, what other political figures do I not know much about? And I honestly didn't know very much about Condoleezza Rice, so I listened to the sample and I thought, well, that's an interesting story. I'll listen to her story. Wow. Like, she's like my favorite person now. <laughs> like, I knew so little about Condoleezza Rice. It's embarrassing. So first of all, I never really realized where she hailed from or how she got her start. All I knew was, you know, she was high up in power in, in Washington. But she actually grew up in Birmingham. And when the Birmingham church bombings were going on, one of her good friends uh, was actually killed in a church bombing. And they could feel the bomb in their church that was having mass at the same time. Or not mass, but as they were having their service. So she grew up in Birmingham in the middle of the civil rights um, movement and their family was very very impacted by that after the bombings they moved to denver and that's where she was in school and the other thing that i find interesting about condoleezza is she was not like someone that you would say like oh this person is going to be 100 percent successful like she she struggled in school she struggled to get into college she struggled in a lot of ways it wasn't like a given like she's a straight a person and we're just going to move on down the track also at that time other things that i am not very knowledgeable of but when she went to stanford for college she was admitted as part of a um not class action lawsuit, <laughs> she was admitted as part of affirmative action. That's how she was able to get into college. She never cared. Like she never cared that she got into college because of affirmative action versus, you know, that she applied and got into college. Condoleezza Rice made the best of every single situation that she was in. And what I got from the book was that she just outworked and out hustled everyone, which is very comforting to me because I like to know that if I just try hard and I work hard, that I can succeed. I've often heard the quote, and I'm not sure who it comes from, that consistency and hard work will outwork talent every day of the week. Like, people can have talent, but if you have hard work and hustle, you can outperform everyone. The other thing I find interesting about, specifically Stanford, is I'm always looking at um, how are different things happening? All the way back in January, I talked about Malcolm Godwell and The Tipping Point and some of the books that he's done, where he talks about there are these little pockets of time where it was like the perfect time to be someone to invent Apple or Microsoft. Like it's, it's not an accident that those two were invented at the same time. So as I was listening to Condoleezza Rice's story, I thought it's not an accident that she was at Stanford and because she was at Stanford, she rose up in the political ranks. That there are so many political people who have come from Stanford, just like there's so many entrepreneurs that have come out of Harvard and all of these other little pockets of time. So that, that investment she has in Stanford, that she was a provost at Stanford, that she really dove into that community and the people there were very instrumental in moving her into politics later. Another thing that was interesting in her story as she was upbringing is her fascination by the Soviet Union and her depth of knowledge of how the Soviet Union came to be, what was going on, and all of the players in the Soviet Union. And because she had that unique knowledge and the depth of her knowledge was unparalleled, like nobody had as much knowledge as she did in that specific area, and she happened to be at Stanford, those two things together are what helped her get into Washington because she had the right knowledge at the right time with the right connections, and that's how she moved into political life. So if you have a, a really great depth of knowledge on one specific thing, and you think like, why is this going to matter? It's amazing how sometimes the thing that you're most passionate about and have the most depth of knowledge on can be useful to other people in the future, but you don't realize that as you're amassing all of that knowledge. I think that's all uh, I have to say about the Condoleezza Rice book. Again, I loved it on Audible. I highly enjoyed it. It helped open my eyes to the civil rights movement more, to how hard it was for women as they were starting to 
go into all these different institutions and what it was like. Often she was the only woman in the room and she was often the only minority in the room. So it opened my eyes to a lot of those things as well. I highly recommend this book. This is the last one of our political month. So go out and vote next month if you're listening to this real time. Tune in next Monday for our next book review. We will move on to a different topic.